really just opposition to abortion. It's a desire to control every aspect of a woman's life, that, uh, particularly any aspect that has to do with sex or reproduction. And, you know, so yesterday the Supreme Court said, okay, we're going to hear these arguments in this uh, Mephipristone case. Now, just to backfill here, just to give you the backstory, uh, a right wing, a, a, a group of right wing fundamentalist religious doctors incorporated in Amarillo, Texas, specifically so that they could go before Judge Matthew Kaczmarek, a, uh, uh, you know, a Bible thumping right winger, uh, Trump appointee, and argue that someday one of these doctors may end up with a patient who had an abortion that caused some sort of long-lasting consequence to them, and now this doctor is going to have to treat them, and it will cause them mental anguish. None of them have ever treated anybody who's had a problem with an abortion. Uh, I mean, there, there should be no standing here at all. This group has no legitimate complaint. They're anticipating a future complaint, which you can't do. But the judge took the case, and then the Fifth Circuit took the case very seriously and said yes. Now, judge, what, and what Judge Kaczmarek said was the, re, the, the Mifepristone, he said two things. One, that the FDA didn't have the authority to legally, uh, to make it legally available in the way that they did. That part of the argument the Supreme Court has, had, was largely struck down by the Fifth Circuit, and the Supreme Court is waving, you know, they're, they're not going to get into that. That's kind of a Chevron deference uh, argument that uh, actually the Supreme Court's got another case this year that they're going to use to take that one up, and we're all holding our breath on that one. But the second argument that, that Matthew, or that was made to him and with which he agreed, this uh, Amarillo, Texas judge, was that in uh, 1873, when Congress passed the, Cos the, the Comstock Act, that law outlaws the distribution through the mail, and it was updated in 1997 to include FedEx and UPS and any other common carrier, in other words, the shipping, via any means of two categories of stuff. Number one, any product that could be used to produce an abortion. And number two, any product that could be used for lewd purposes. Now, lewd purposes was interpreted by the Supreme Court itself as well as the other courts right up until relatively recently as including birth control devices. This, over, this only ended in 1965 with the Griswold case, uh, Griswold versus Connecticut before the U.S. Supreme Court, in which the Supreme Court in 65 legalized birth control for married couples. It was still considered lewd and illegal to send birth control through the mail by the Comstock Act right up until 1972, when the Supreme Court, the year before Roe v. Wade, the Supreme Court ruled that even unmarried people should have legal access to birth control. So that's, I mean, that's how relatively recent this stuff is. So anyhow, Matthew Kaczmarek, the, this judge says, you know, the Comstock Act says you can't ship mifepristone through the mail. It's for lewd purposes, and it's for abortion. And, and, and you know, the logical extension would be you can't ship, uh, if you can't ship it through the mail, then hospitals can't receive it, doctor's offices can't receive it, pharmacies can't receive it, and you sure as heck can't receive it. Now, there are a number of groups, including the wife of Josh Hawley, who argued this before the Fifth Circuit uh, Court of Appeals, who are even going so far as to suggest, imply, or even sometimes outright say that not only should we ban mifepristone from being mailed, but we should ban all birth control devices from being mailed. This is like the ultimate Catholic argument. And uh, although it's not unique to the Catholic Church any longer, but you know, it, it's been their argument for you know, 50 years. So the question is, will the Supreme Court uphold the Comstock Act? And the simple reality is that the Supreme Court's never ruled on the Comstock Act. It's still on the books. It's been there for 100, literally 150 years this year. 
it had it, it, in uh, back uh, a couple of decades ago, the uh, the uh, one of the circuit courts, I believe it was the Second Circuit Court, took a look at it and said this, uh, you know, the the ban on sending legal things through the mail. This was a a lawsuit in the 1930s or 40s that had to do with a company called Young's Rubber. And Young's Rubber manufactured condoms out of, late, out of rubber, out of latex. And they sued because the Comstock Act said that they couldn't ship their products. They couldn't ship it to their customers. They couldn't ship it to stores. They, you know, they, they were very concerned about this. And the Supreme Court agreed with them and said, you know, uh, condoms were legal or are legal now, and so the Comstock Act doesn't apply to them. But that has not been upheld by the U.S. Supreme Court. So the Supreme Court could very easily just say, well, you know, that 1930s decision for Young's Rubber, we're going to reverse that. And we're going to say the Comstock Act still stands. It's on the books. It, it, it clearly reflects Congress's intent. And if Congress doesn't want the Comstock Act to be on the books, Congress should repeal it. Now, this, you know, in all probability, Congress would then get about repealing the Comstock Act. But I'm not sure that it would do it with this Congress. I don't think that MAGA Mike Johnson, who's, who's guided by God and the Bible exclusively, is going to say, uh, oh, yeah, we're, we're, we're fine with mailing birth control and abortion and lewd purposes, things through the mail. I mean, Anthony Comstock was just one weird cat. This was, his mother died when he was 10, and he never again met a woman who lived up to his mother's standards. He went on, he used to, he used to travel around the country visiting pornography shows, visiting peep shows and belly dancers, and, and a, he had a huge collection of the hardest hardcore pornography that whenever he came to Washington, D.C. to lobby for things like the Comstock Act, he would invite all these male senators and members of the House of Representatives to these, uh, you know, showings of his hardcore pornography, and they'd all go and they'd go, "Oh, this is terrible! I can't believe that. We got to, we got to write a wall against this." Hey, can we come back tomorrow night and watch this again, please? And I mean, this, this literally, this is what happened. It was like Ed Meese's commission, you know, during the during the Nick, during the was it the Reagan administration or Nixon? I forget which one. Uh, Ed Meese was the attorney general, and, and he watched some 600 hours of hardcore pornography and then said, this stuff damages your brain. <laughs> it's like, we need to outlaw it. It's like, uh, yeah, tell us about it. Uh, so anyhow, this is the bottom line. I mean, the, 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 if the Comstock Act is upheld by the Supreme Court, and I frankly expect them to do so. Now, I realize that, that I'm probably the outlier here. Most don't. Uh, Dolly Lithwick and Mark Joseph Stern are also writing about this over at Slate, where they say that, uh, you know, even if the court just says, you know, hey, you know, go ahead and mail the stuff, uh, they know more dramatically such a move could leave open the possibility that a future Republican president could ban abortion nationwide without enacting a single new law by exploiting the Puritanical Comstock Act of 1873. So it's like, you know, take this seriously. <laughs> These these people who are promoting this, you know, these Republicans, they're taking it very seriously. They want the Comstock Act enforced. And the Supreme Court could say to the Biden administration, you have to enforce this law.